is today we are going to talk about how to graph any how to graph a quadratic not when it's in our vertex form but when it's in our standard form and we're going to learn two different ways to go ahead and do this but the day the way that we're going to learn today is by what we call completing the square and this is a very 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 important method for you guys to understand because we will be using it throughout the year completing the square was that your question no okay so I would definitely write down completing the square. Do I have any more room here? No, I don't. Completing the square. OK, so I'm going to give you guys it in a process. Step number one, you're going to group the um, x squared and x term. This is what we call our quadratic and our linear term. So step number one is grouping the two terms. So what you simply do to group is we use grouping symbols, parentheses or brackets. We're going to use parentheses. Does everybody see what I did? Just put parentheses around the, quadra around the quadratic term and the linear term. Okay. Step number two factor so a is equal to 1. Now, you're only going to be factoring out of your group. okay? But you guys look at this. Remember, a is a coefficient of your um, quadratic term here. Good morning. Is a equal to 1? Is a equal to 1? Is the coefficient of my x squared equal to 1? Yes. So we're good. So I don't need to do step number 2. Step number three, find the value C that completes the square. Do you guys remember this from your homework? Yeah, so step number three is basically your guys' homework. So you're going to take B divided by 2 and square it. Okay? So you take B divided by 2. In this case, we have 2 divided by 2 squared. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Okay. Then step number 4, you're going to <coughs> add and subtract. Um, you're going to add and subtract your value c. Now what I mean by that is if you guys remember, I told you guys to write in your, you know, like we rewrote the perfect square trinomial. So you're going to take your 1, you're going to add it inside those parentheses. So I'm going to have y equals parentheses x squared plus 2x. I'm going to add it inside the parentheses. And then I'm going to subtract it outside the parentheses. But you have to make sure you add and subtract it. This and this is what you guys did for homework, right? And then we do the next step, which I'll show you on your homework again. But that's what you guys did. But you have to make sure you add and subtract it. Does anybody know why we need to add and subtract? Or anybody want to give an idea on why we need to add and subtract? Yes? Because there might be a negative and a positive answer. Um, well, if you are solving, then yes, you, there is going to be a negative and a positive answer. But let me, let me give you guys an example. You guys can just write this on the side if you'd like. If I said x plus 4 equals 10, right? and I said solve for x, what would you guys do? You would subtract 4 on both sides. And then you'd have x equals 6. Now, would you guys agree with me that the two black equations are equivalent, meaning they have the same value? Yes. Yeah, one just looks a little bit differently than the other. right? But the value of x in both of these equations is 6. Yes? OK. So when you do the same thing on both sides, you produce equivalent, equ equivalent equations. That's why we call them the properties of equality. If I had another equation, let's say 5 equals 5. If I did 5 plus 2 minus 2 equals 5, would you guys agree with me that these are equivalent equations, meaning they equal, they're still equal, true to each other? 
Yeah. If you add and subtract, you still produce equivalent equations. Right? You didn't, if you add on both sides, or if you add and subtract on the same side, you're not changing the equation. So what I want you guys to understand is this equation is this. This is what the equation is. We can't just add a number to it. That's going to change the equation. So if we add a number, we have to subtract a number. Does that make sense? You just can't add numbers and say, oh, here's my new equation. No. We have to keep the same equation, but we, if we're going to add a number, which I'm telling you to do, which I'll sh explain why, if we're going to add a number to an equation, we have to subtract it to make sure it's equal, make sure it's the same equation. However, now in step number five, we're going to factor to a binomial squared. And if you guys remember, that was x plus b divided by 2 squared. So x plus b divided by 2 squared. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to factor it. So step number 5 is step number 5 here. Um, bu -bu -bu -bum, bu -bu -bu -bum, step number 5, step number 5. Oh, what was my b divided by 2? b divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 was 1. So I have y equals x plus 1 squared. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Now, guess what I did, ladies and gentlemen? I now took an equation that was in standard form, and now I just rewrote it in vertex form. You guys see that? You guys see what I did? It's amazing. Yeah, I, that's homework, though, right? Yeah. This is new. Now. I'll go over the homework here in a second. Or I'll go over and answer any questions you have. Oh, I'll just actually, I'm going to individually help on homework. But does everybody, do you have any questions? Anybody see what I did here? It's a process. It's a five step process. Make sure you have that five step process written down. Because, ladies and gentlemen, what's. Guys, can you put that phone away, please? Put the phone away. So. What is important, what is, what is interesting when we have it in this format? We can now identify the vertex, which is negative 1 comma negative 4. We know the axis of symmetry is ax equals negative 1. Do you guys follow me on that? I see some eyes, so we're kind of going crazy. You don't even need to graph. We could graph this if I asked you to do it, which actually we're going to go, go and do. Um, and you could graph this. And actually, let's go ahead. I'll just identify the axis symmetry and the axis. Um, the maximum point, or the maximum or the minimum. Does this graph open up or open down? It opens up. So therefore, the vertex is the, if the graph opens up, the vertex is the maximum or the minimum? Minimum. Because the graph is going to continue going up. So you can say the minimum value or the minimum point is negative 1, negative 4. All right? And then I'll talk about the graph here again in just a second. So we also want to make sure